We are here in a, in a boatyard and as you can see, busy with the anti foul on Sisu. So it was been a little bit hectic. I couldn't do any videos. It was just like crazy, crazy, crazy. And Pietro just visited, uh, he's now in New Zealand, visiting a grandchild for the first time. So Pietro is super happy to not just to do Starlink video calls, but actually be there in the flesh. So she also didn't put out any videos. Um, so I think it's time for me to get you guys the practical thing what happened. So let us get back to Sisu and do some video editing and show you guys what happened. Last episode we did uh, the planning, the weather for the weather window to get around Hurricane Ian. And we are now in this episode, we are going to show you what actually happened and transpired in the practical environment of that planning. Uh, we're actually busy leaving Reedsville and the sun is about to come up, but there's no wind. 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 Now the only thing is somewhere, some places here, there, there are, I think, crab pots or lobster pots. And so you need to be careful. And then when you come out of here, very, so that is where we're going. And there's also a lot of these like fishing poles. I think it's, it's like almost like a fish farm, but I have nets in between. So I don't think they farm fish. I think they catching fish or crabs. You have to be careful. That's why we living at daybreak so we can see them. Some of them show up on the radar, but most of them, you cannot see them. I'm just going to say outer route to here, so it will be close enough, so go there. Oh man. And more options, outer route to here. Then it will start calculating the route. And I will later on just go and refine it because it sometimes it will go underneath a bridge that you cannot go through or go over some shallow areas even though that you told him it, like a certain depth that we said two meter minimum that sometimes two meters is just not enough but if you don't say two meters it never finish you can see the, the clouds still not happiness so it's now finished and I just will say follow it and let's go center the boat so now I can see it will, it will go it's fine here but you see over here we need to make sure that everything is done well so I just go through the whole route and make sure that there's no obstacles or if there's obstacles that I know where they are. And also check every now and then, the no boats. See here's some crab pots right here next to us. So you have to be vigilant on nothing from the back. Okay. Raymarine is so sluggish. So there I will pause a, a channel. So we need to make sure we don't see in the big boats. Or we can see both big boats, which you just not like chicken with them. Okay, it looks like everything is hey okay. And that's it. So verify your route, make sure that you're happy with the auto router, what it did, and don't just assume. And now we can follow the route. So these fish fishing I don't know what it is. Fish stakes or something. It's a lot of sticks that's sticking up. And I believe there's nets and stuff between them, but they unlit, there's no lights. 
So at night you might just go right into them and that will be a disaster. So the sun is already 25 minutes up, but we cannot see it. The... And look at here. So it's not that advisable to, to do this Chesapeake at night. There was a hurricane in the air. It's now only a storm, a big storm. And the whole system is now moving out to the ocean. And there's another sailboat right in the middle of the sunrise. Oh, another stick. You don't want those things to get into a prop. It's not going to be nice. So let me go back. We've got our Genoa out and the weather. We still, we have wind now coming from that direction. <laughs> uh, we're actually expecting the wind from that direction. And you can see the layer of clouds over there at the, on the horizon. And they're coming this way, but the front that was predicted to hit us early this morning is already now two hours later. So we're still motoring. We have one engine on and we're still waiting for that to catch us. But at this moment we're doing around seven knots with this little bit of wind in our engine. So at this moment it seems like we're staying in front of the front and we might be able to get there even way before we plan. So for now, our planning, we are ahead of our plan, which is a good thing and also a bad thing. The good thing is, we will not get wet when we anchor, but the bad thing is we're using the engine. Um, so we're only using the one engine, but it's still diesel that we use and we could have used the sails. But there is just not enough wind to sail. And if you look at this, there is really not enough wind. We were counting on that wind over there. It is what it is. Planning with a sailboat is not always working the way you want it. So keep that in mind. And we're going to keep it in mind when we go past address in a few days time and this is why we need to check the weather all the time making sure if it's going for the good is better but if it's going for the worst you need to be prepared to abandon your plan and at this stage it's not a, we, we're not in danger and we need to do some provisionings so it's maybe good that we get there and not just abandon it <laughs> good morning We're having a, our first first cups of coffee <laughs> and this morning we had a little bit more hot beverages than normal. It is freezing cold. I'm looking now here at the, at the weather and we're sitting somewhere there. That's the exact spot and it says 17 knots now and we are on the easy model. And Currently it is 7.5 knots, 8 knots and this whole morning was not, we couldn't hear the wind whistling through the shroud so I don't think it's ever been as high as 17 and if I look at the sea state, the sea state is very calm um, so I think we, we're not at 17 knots so the current prediction <laughs> is not even up to date but that was when we started the planning, that was two days ago, we managed to get here, it was very good, very nice. Um, Anchorage, a little, little bit, and it's protected from the waves, we don't have a big fetch. So we might be a little bit protected by the, the trees there, there's not a big swell going on. There was crab pots right in the middle of the place where we would have had excellent spot for that. Uh, Yesterday it was it was windy and rainy, but we managed to get some provisions. So we're here in Hampton, and it's it's a 
a coastal flooding going on and we did LPG, propane, propane, some provisions and it is damn cold. But you can see the flat lines, there is definitely a bigger flood than expected. The grass lawns, the jetties, some of the jetties is under water already. And if it was not floating docks, it would have been under water as well. Let us see now what is a prediction saying. Let us go to GFS and see whether GFS is closer to what we have now. So GFS is also saying 20 knots we are right there and it can be that we are we are somewhat protected by the trees and houses over there at the bridge we are next to the bridge is 20 knots we are still 9.9 .9, knots so i don't think we are at the predictions let's look at hrr which is a local model and the local model is saying 21 knots Hmm. Definitely not there. I like spire. Let's see what says spire. 17 knots. Hmm. Okay, so this means we are actually in a protected anchorage and that the wind maybe above there is 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 much faster than down here above the tree levels. Although I don't see the trees moving that much. Okay, that's it. So let's work with our model EC. And we looked at what we said before, um, two days ago, that at this point here, we will have good weather. And remember, we were saying when we leave here, we will have 20 knots like it is now. And that's when we leave tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. So let us move to 7 o'clock tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, 2 o'clock. And you can see how the wind is already changing a lot. 7 o'clock. And you can see the wind already changed quite a lot. So we will even have downwind going there <laughs> to, the, to the edge at 22 knots, which is okay we just need to reef quite well and then we're going to go down and let's see at Hatteras how that will be 24 hours from tomorrow so Wednesday uh, Thursday 7 o'clock 11 knots so you can see it's already much much less wind um, so that is good it's actually better this way and then it turns more south and then at 7 o'clock we are at address let us look at GFS for that 11 knots EC 10 knots Spire 11 knots so NAM also very local and NAM is doing I think to one day two days ahead of time so they are good you can see the low pressure here is moving now in that direction or the the storm is going in that direction so we are I think we we are much better off if we look at the models here than we were two days ago so for the the weather went for the best I think so seven o'clock we and let's see then further let's now plan a little bit further so we will go down and as that is another couple of 12 hours or so so it seems like we will need to motor and we motor at five knots and we use a lot of diesel but since we were already like a lot of sailing done, I think we can maybe use the engines then to recharge our batteries. If it's going to be like this, we're definitely going to need to recharge our batteries because we don't get any sun and we're using our engines 
to, to charge the battery. So we might need the engines a little bit to charge the batteries, which is not a bad thing then. So by the time we get to the anchorage, we will good, be good with the batteries. We've got the main up, the Genoa up. We are almost at the clouds where I think we will get the wind. At this, now, at this moment, we're having the engines on. Um, and we need to, to charge our batteries anyway. But something I want to show you guys is the, our point of interest is basically Hatteras over here. So I'm going to go to that point and I'm going to say um, edit this one and I'm going to rename it to say Hatteras. When I go to our navigation, route plan, then I can look for the waypoint Hatteras and I can see we will get there around 4 o'clock tomorrow morning, which is not good, so we need to slow down. So, but that is now at 7 knots, 6.7 .7 knots. 7 o'clock, you see now it is 7.20 at 5.1 knots, which is what we calculated. To do that, 5 knots, then we know address is okay. And we will arrive now, oh, 3 o'clock in the morning, at the end of the route between the sandbanks, also not good. The dilemma of sailing. <laughs> Peter and I, we're having a cup of coffee. Cheers. <laughs> and it's freezing cold. It's still <laughs> damn cold. We're looking for blue waters and warm weather. See, the wind yeah. is from the right direction. And, well, not, not yet up to speed. Because I think that land mass is still kind of like protecting us. But if I look at the clouds, the speed of the clouds, then they are moving fast and so i think the moment we reach the channel that's the channel marker and this is the marker right here so the moment we reach that marker i think we will then pick up the big speed of the wind and the wind will then pick up definitely and my speed lock is again not working oh man so we cannot see what is a true wind speed what what does bother us both is this so our route estimated time of arrival the end of the route is nine o'clock at night so that one is not working out well so it's either that hatteras make sure that hatteras is good which i think is maybe the important one so it also means we can go later around Hatteras and then sail less and motor more. <laughs> nah, no, man. Okay, I've jived the main. And for now, it looks okay. Oh, not really. So the idea is just then you can you can go of course just make sure that you don't hit a rock or another boat and the boat will get a sweet spot like now i think we're getting there and we've done now 140 and uh, we should go 100 so we're in like 35 you see there we need to do 160 at the white point but now we're already at 140 and this is much more happier but it's going to be a little bit confused now because I think it's bending the Ray Marine is super More super slow we are getting now to our turning point at Cape Henry uh, basically where we're going to turn south about half an hour from now uh, the Genoa is not happy we have this funny side swell and we still have the main ooh, we still have the main up and it is still on the reef we have 15 we have 15 knots of wind 
we're doing uh, just below seven knots which is a problem <laughs> because if we go and have a look at our route plan and you will see Hatteras three o'clock in the morning not a good idea but we will arrive there tomorrow afternoon half past two more or less so maybe not a bad idea and this is the thing about planning you need to know how much you will do in this sea state what is the speed that you're going to do um, I did not really expect that we will get this fast in the sea state um, at this point so wing on wing with the Genoa still because we are going dead downwind so now we can see what the wind speed is the true wind speed it is 11 there uh, apparent wind is 11 and we're doing 8 knots so it means that the wind is actually 19 knots here now say 1920 because we're doing 8.7 point that and say 20 knots so we are just here at the corner um, at the cape we busy busy slowly turning as you can see over here and we're going to stay at dead downwind for a while it's so nice and quiet <laughs> No flapping, no whacking of the rigging. We'll just enjoy a little bit going like that and then we will turn. So the wind is 20 knots, but this is how it feels when you go dead downwind. We did the final jibe. We now sailing and it seems like both the sails are kind of like happy. We still at reef one here and the apparent wind now is about 14 knots but we do about 8.6 8.7 and we every now and then if we surf we see nine knots but that's maximum and this is the sea state very calm it's very quiet um, and yeah so that is basically our course and then we will that is address over there so it's just that little part over there so now it will be like this for nine hours hopefully if you can see this nine hours and 40 oh, say 10 hours let's say 10 hours and this is how it's going to be for 10 hours just had to drop the main and if you can see on a sonar all these little jiggy jiggy jiggies is basically how, how choppy is we're moving uh, quite a lot and it's forward and backwards and sideways and we just move quite a lot and, and this is so I would say the bottom is straight but because we're going so much up and down the sonar is even the registering that we're going up and down and it's like irregular pattern so I had to drop the main it's just not enough wind uh, the buoy number two and I've put it on a radar so every now and then it does show up with the radar there it is so we we can be sure that it is still at the same place where the chart is saying it is it's not in a different place and it's good to know otherwise we can run into it because it is pitch black we cannot see a thing outside um, so something to take note of that is the inner marker the way that we want to go to outer <laughs> that's the inner marker but it says outer diamond show boy number two and there's the outer marker so we we can see the outer marker, but so that's Cape Hatteras. 
there is the inner marker and there is the outer marker. I can see the red light for that one. But this one is, is not lit. So you cannot see it in night, at night. Uh, that one, you cannot see. This one. That one, you can see, and you can also see the radar is is also picking that one up. Uh, zoom out. You can see the radar is picking this a little red dot just next to it. So that means the radar is picking that one up. Uh, the radar was picking this one up too, but this is C. There we go. So the radar can see that one, but it's not lit. It's just black. That one it just passed Hatteras, and it was shaky as can come. And we went down as low as nine meters. I will not <laughs> really recommend lower to go shallower. Um, nine meters was already pretty shaky and bumpy and the big swells were, were really like yeah, surfing the big swells. But we threw that and now it is for Cape Lookout. Um, the wind, yeah, the wind is not strong enough for the sails to, to, to sail through here. Would have liked to sail through here, but no, it is too shaky, too bumpy, and the wind is just too light. It's the parent wind is now nine. If we had the main up, it would have been a very big noise, a big racket. Um, that's it. We've been, we just passed the address. We have nice blue skies. Nice wind, not that heavy wind, but we have wind. All the sails is up unreefed. Nice beam. And the sea state is actually very calm. And every now and then there's a nice gust that's coming there and we pick up speed again. So it's it's a perfect day for sailing here. So we decided we're going to skip Cape Lookout. And I think Cape Lookout is somewhere there. But we're just going to pass it and we're going to go all the way to Charleston while we have a little bit of wind. We made it here at uh, Just Catamarans and everything is fine here. Sisu got the bottom paint done and the rest of that trip was kind of like uneventful, no wind, even though there was wind predicted. Uh, maybe we were not close enough to the coastal line, I don't know. But we had no wind, we had to motor all the way to Jacksonville. Um, we are expecting another <laughs> big storm here now, and that's Nicole. So Nicole was named last night, and she will arrive here in one or two days. So tomorrow, you can see I already got lots of lines, lines, spring lines that way, spring lines that way, and also on this side a lot of lines on this side. So we expect a big wind to come from that side. So not worry about that, but on this side, we've got a couple of lines that make sure that we don't go that way or this way. But most importantly, we need to be staying away from the docks. So we've got these lines that's trying to, to keep us on that side. But that was it. So no big winds on our passage and but as per usual always make sure 
the dejective weather often and always be aware of how it's shifting. It's the same now it's going to happen now with this Nicole, this storm that's coming. Um, and every day it's fluid. So one day, one of the models will say it will arrive tomorrow. Others say a day later. Some of them say it's going to be a little bit south. Others say a little bit north. So it's weather models, weather prediction, they are not accurate. So keep, look for the worst, make for the worst. And if it's better, it is better. It's always a bargain.